Lecture number three. We're continuing the precipitation process and we're going to focus on the second way to produce precipitation and that's by orographic means. It's called orographic precipitation. Now the term orographic is Latin meaning mountains. All right. Um, so anything that's occurring on in mountains you might see the term orographic. Now, orographic precipitation, as I've already mentioned, does not occur in Louisiana at all. Uh, but it's very, very common in the western United States where we've got a, you know, a lot of high mountain ranges that pretty much run north to south. Right? Then at the same time, we've got westerly winds, predominant westerly winds uh, with you know, weather systems coming in off the Pacific and hitting these high mountain uh, boundaries, right? These are pretty tall mountain ranges, you know, getting up to uh, over 14,000 feet. Um, so they hit, uh, those winds hit a very, very high mountain wall, almost three, three miles high. All right, here's uh, the figure that we're going to be looking at uh, of a high mountain range, uh, you know, again, about 14,000 feet or about three miles tall. And what, if, what I want to kind of point out is, this really is an all or nothing situation, meaning that, you know, one side of the mountain range gets all of the rain, and then the other side gets nothing. So the rain occurs on the windward slopes, the slopes of the mountains facing the oncoming westerly winds. And what winds up happening is you know, uh, the westerly winds are coming in off the moist Pacific, hit this mountain wall and the air is forced to rise, all right, forced to rise uh, along the mountain wall. And uh, the precipitation is produced in the same way as, uh, as uh, convection, you know, meaning that it's all, you know, uh, going to cool uh, adiabatically. And so uh, as the air is forced to rise and cool, it's going to start to cool at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. All right. And then eventually, uh, we're going to hit 100% relative humidity, and the air is going to continue to be forced to rise by the westerly winds up the mountains. Uh, but the air is now going to be uh, uh, creating the, the mountain cloud, uh, the orographic cloud, actually, and it's going to rise and cool at the wet adiabatic lapse rate. And so we're going to wind up with uh, you know abundant all right, rainfall only on the windward slopes. And on the back slopes, it's incredible. It's nothing. And so what winds up happening is the westerly winds are, you know, being forced to rise and cool and creating all that orographic precipitation and cloud. But then on the back slopes, what winds up happening is the westerly winds now are sinking three miles, sinking three miles. So what winds up happening is the orographic cloud on the back slopes starts to evaporate because it's heating and, uh, you know, the air is sinking, you know, if you think about it, the air is rising and cooling on the windward slopes. If the air is sinking, it's going to wind up heating, right? It's going to wind up heating as it's sinking on back down. Uh, and so we wind up with sinking air, and we know what sinking air is. That creates high pressure and dry conditions. Now, the term that's used and the term that you need to know, you know, on the back slopes, the nothing situation is called a rain shadow. All right, and you wind up with hot and dry air since the air is now sinking, all right, and heating instead of rising and cooling. And it's called a rain shadow effect, right? hot and dry conditions. Right? It's kind of interesting. I want to give you two examples in the western United States. I want to uh, talk about a really high mountain range in California. It's called the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Now, it doesn't look like much here. I mean, this is just a little simple raised relief map of California. But the Sierra Nevada Mountains, indeed, are you know, 14, over 14,000 feet tall. As a matter of fact, the tallest mountain in the lower 48, Mount Whitney, is located about right here. So it is a very, very tall mountain range. And what winds up happening is, of course, you know, we get the westerly winds with the onshore flow from you know, the Pacific, and you wind up with you know, pretty wet windward slopes, all right? and on average getting about 50 to 70 inches of precipitation per year, uh, which is you know, pretty decent. Uh, by comparison, you know, on average, you know, we get about 70 inches of precipitation in, in South Louisiana, about. And then on the back slopes, uh, we wind up getting 
well, significantly less, you know, anywhere from about four to 12 inches of precipitation on the, on the back slopes. And I get these numbers here uh, by taking a look at uh, this map using ISO lines. They're called ISO Hyatt's. Uh, and these are H-Y-E-T-S, -H and these are lines connecting points of equal precipitation. But if you take a look at the windward slopes here, kind of matching things up, you've got 125, 150, 180, and you kind of go over here, it's in centimeters, and you get the inches. And then on the back slopes, you see, you know, 25, you know, 20, 15, 10, that kind of thing. And so you kind of look over here at the ISO high, it's, and we've got the conversion in inches, and that's where I wind up with the 4 to 12 inches of precipitation. Precipitation. And, uh, and so you wind up with really, really dry conditions. And if you think about it, you know, what is the state immediately to the east of California? You know, it's Nevada. And, you know, what do you know about the climate of Nevada? It's a desert. It's a desert. It's a rain shadow desert. And the Mojave Desert here uh, is a rain shadow desert with the coastal mountains here. Death Valley, for sure, is a rain shadow desert. And the state of Nevada is a rain shadow desert. Uh, abundant precipitation. I, I just want to mention that you know the Sierra Nevada mountains are famous. We'll be mentioning them again, uh, but it, it is really famous. This is where Yosemite National Park is, right here. Okay, so it's you know well forested and beautiful. And then you know just right immediately to the south uh, is another famous. Uh, National Park, and it's uh, you know, Sequoia National Park. You know, where the great giant trees are located. And and, and uh, let me just show you this. Here we are. Uh, so on the windward slopes uh, of the high mountain ranges in the west, you know, particularly <clears throat> we're talking about the uh, Sierra Nevada. I mean, these, these famous trees, the tall redwoods, these are the tallest trees on earth. I mean, attaining heights of, you know, 300 or 400 feet tall. And then the big, fat sequoia trees, that's Sequoia National Park. These are, these giant trees are all nourished by all of that abundant orographic precipitation on the windward slopes of the Sierra Nevada and other high mountain ranges on the, along the West Coast. And then it's amazing. You go on the opposite side, on, say, the Nevada side, and it is desert. It is desert. Uh, because of you know, the rain shadow effect and sinking air. I like this picture right here. Uh, we're here in Nevada, uh, in the Owens Valley, you know, facing, you know, one of the mountains in the Sierra Nevada. And you can actually see the orographic cloud, right, on the windward slope. And you can actually see the cloud evaporating right here um, as the air is sinking, right, and heating up and sinking air creating the high pressure and you can see the high pressure conditions here so it really is quite interesting i want to give you a second example again this is another really high mountain range uh, that dominates uh washington state which we have illustrated here and actually uh oregon uh, it's a sister state just immediately to the south and actually the geography of both states are pretty much the same uh, both are dominated uh, by a very tall mountain range called the Cascade Mountains, and I've got I've added the icon here for Washington State. Uh, but the the uh, the mountain range, the Cascades, continue on uh, into uh, into Oregon, right, just immediately to the south. So the conditions are exactly the same. Like I said, they're sister states; they're pretty much in terms of geography the same. And uh, what I want to uh, focus on. Uh, are the precipitation numbers and the colors right in through here. Uh, so if you've got kind of the greens and into the yellow, you're getting, you know, a lot of precipitation. And they've got a, uh, a weather station. Uh, it's called in Vernier, you know, Vernier Weather Station here, right here. And, uh, and here's a bar graph, you know, a monthly uh, blue bar graph showing the amount of precipitation per year. And you can just see that it's got a lot, all right, a lot. And so on average... Uh, on the windward slopes of the Cascades in Washington and Oregon, uh, they receive greater than 130 inches of precip per year. And that's pretty much double than what we get in South Louisiana. So that's definitely you know, a good example of abundant orographic precipitation. Uh, and then uh, take a look at uh, 
the colors here on the back slopes, right? The, you know, kind of the eastern half of Washington and the eastern half of, of Oregon. You see all the reds. And so that's indicating, you know, you know less than you know, 20 inches or under 10 inches of precipitation per year. And here we've got a, a weather station in Yakima, right? Where, where we are in the red. And you can just see right on the on the back slopes, the, you know, the, the monthly uh, blue bar graphs are very, very small. And so on average, here, uh, you know, in the eastern, you know, half of Washington and Oregon, I mean, you're receiving less than 10 inches of precip per year, you know, here at this one weather station uh, in Yakima right here. Uh, it, they receive about 8 inches. I mean, and so it's all or nothing. It really is quite incredible. And here's a satellite image uh, of Washington State. Here's Puget Sound here. But all of this white right here, these, these are the snow-capped mountain peaks right, of the Cascades. These are all snow-capped mountains. So right here are, is, are the Cascade Mountains, 14,000 feet. I mean, they're really tall, just like the Sierra Nevada. And you can see the green, okay? That represents, you know, dense forest. And this is where you'll find, you know, dense pine trees and, again, the giant uh, redwoods and sequoias. And then take a look at the back slopes. What do you see? white right that's that's desert right that is dry dry desert rain shadow desert and there's you know, just one thing that i want to mention to you most people when you think of washington and oregon state i mean you think of you know seattle and portland receiving abundant rainfall well they do they get you know the orographic precipitation but most people do not realize that one half of the state, the eastern portion of both Washington and Oregon, are deserts. People do not realize that, and now you know that too. End lecture three.